Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Where Wendy Creates. Today, we are working on a block that Sylvia has just uh, created for me. So I wanted a fast quilt that we could put together, together, uh, put together, together with you here, my friends. Um, so this is our block, and we're going to cut out six and a half and seven and a half inch blocks. We're going to make our quilt uh, four of these blocks across. Each block ends up being 18 inches. So 18 times four across, 18 times five down, then we'll add borders. So if each block has four half square triangles, two solids, two at three and a half by six and a half inch strips and two at three and a half by 12 and a half inch strips, we're looking at, um, I would ask you to add a half a yard to each of these. So for the six and a half inch squares of color, I would purchase two yards. For the 40 of a uh, seven and a half inch squares for color, I would purchase two and a half yards. For the squares of white, two and a half yards. For the 20 uh, three and a half inch strips, I would go ahead and purchase uh, two and a half yards of the white plus your batting, plus your backing. And that way we can put together borders with the excess or you can use a different fabric if you choose. So we are going to uh, go ahead and put together this beautiful block. And I hope that you will join me. Let's go ahead and get started. We're at our cutting table and I have uh, gone ahead and folded our fabric in half and then again in half. So we're looking at cutting through four pieces at a time. And I'm gonna go ahead and measure out uh, six and a half inches, and then we're going to trim it off. Three, four, five, six and a half. We'll do our six and a halves, and then we'll do our seven and a halves. So when you are cutting, you want a ruler ideally that's large enough to go across your fabric. Make sure all of your lines are lined up on all sides and that you're perfectly smooth. And then recount. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half. You want your measurements to be as accurate as possible. And I always find it's nice to measure twice, cut once, and then move on down and continue to make your uh, pieces. Uh, so we're cutting them all into strips and then we're gonna come back and cut them into blocks. Two, three, four, five, six, and a half. The weights really keep it uh, held down nicely. You've got your fingers way away from the board. You're measuring twice. And you're trimming your piece. Once we have all of our first color cut out in our six and a half strips and our seven and a half inch strips, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the, uh, the neutral and I'm gonna grab the other color and we're gonna go ahead and cut them out. Then we begin the quilt. If your fabric has a lot of wrinkles, it is very important to go ahead and press it prior to trimming it into your block size pieces because you want accurate pieces. And with the wrinkles, you can't get accurate cuts. Sometimes I find it amazing how many wrinkles can be in brand new fabric. So, again, make sure you press out all the wrinkles before you cut your shapes. And now that we've cut all of our strips out, we're going to go ahead and cut our six and a half inch strips into six and a half inch uh, squares. So if you want, you can use your uh, larger ruler or your six and a half by six and a half, whatever you have. Sometimes it's easier to go with a larger ruler. And hang on to your scraps. We're gonna have an upcoming project where we're going to use all of the pieces and create other beautiful blocks with them. So 
So I can start sewing. I'm going to take all my seven and a half inch strips and cut them into seven and a half inch squares. And then we will sew them together and make our half square triangles out of our three choice fabrics for this quilt. And we're going to start working with our uh, neutral color, our beige and our blue to make our half square triangles. So we are going to set them down. Now uh, that one needs to be ring, uh, ironed and we're going to lay them face to face and we're going to sew one corner to the other. Uh, well, we're going to make a line and then sew just off of that one corner to the opposite corner, a quarter inch away from our center line. And with our pieces right sides together, I'm gonna to go ahead and pen each side. I'm gonna take my ruler straight down the center. We're not sewing on the line. We are sewing a quarter inch on either side. You can take your marker, you can take your pencil, whatever you're comfortable with, just draw a line so that you can see it. Now we're going to sew a quarter inch on this side and a quarter inch on this side. We'll do a whole stack of these. Once we're done, we'll take them over to the iron. We're going to repress those uh, stitch lines. Then we'll take it over to the cutting board and cut on the line. So let's go ahead and get started with our uh, half square triangles. We're moving right on over to the sewing machine popping us in and we're going to go a quarter inch from that line on both sides. We can leave our pens in and you could go ahead and do your next one or we can simply turn this one around, cut off the one we've previously done so it's not in our way. And so straight down the other side, a quarter inch away from that center line. See, we've got our toe of our foot. Our needle is on zero, zero, which on this machine, on the Brother uh, Runway Limited Edition CE 1100 PRW, um, we have the, the foot where we can sew right here and we're going to have our quarter inch is right here at the point of this foot. So we're running the point of this foot straight down the line. You know how your sewing machine works. So use your sewing machine the way it works and we're going to uh, keep on working on these two stacks. saw the uh, quilt pattern, you know that we have uh, a lot, lot, lot of these half square triangles to make and each square that we sew on either side of this line after we cut it is going to be two half square triangles. So I am very excited about this simple, simple quilt. You can make this at home as well. You just have to enjoy the process. And it all comes together so quickly, you're going to be so delighted and glad that you consider to come along on this project and make this quilt as well. And I 
like chain stitching these. It just seems to make it so much easier and quicker for me. I don't have to uh, waste a lot of thread when we go through the process. And I don't have to worry about having a starter or ender. Um, while I sew, I just keep on sewing. We have our first stack ready to go to the ironing board to press them and then we'll meet again at the cutting table. Just wanted to take a look again. We're using four half square triangles per block. And we are just giving our blocks a quick press and then we'll be going on over to the cutting table to cut them on their center line and so we are getting much much closer to putting together the first row block and again just locking in the stitches making sure it's crisp and happy and then we go to the cutting board and we're taking all of our squares that we have sewn and we're cutting them in half by using our ruler, our weight to help weight it down, and slicing it right in between our stitch lines. And we're going to go ahead and press our half square triangles. I do want to use steam so the ironing goes a lot faster. So we're filling up our steam. We have the steam turned on. And always in your iron, you want to use good, clean water, purified water, so you don't uh, come up with the calcium crystals and other issues. And we're just going to grab a hold of our stars. We're going to pull the blue backwards, so we're going to be pressing the seams towards our dark blue color. And we're just going to keep on uh, pressing our seams until we have this stack complete. I just kind of pull it in the center, work my iron one side to the other, and after this we'll take them to the uh, cutting board, trim them down to the perfect six and a half by six and a half, and then we can begin our quilt blocks. Because our quilt blocks, again, they take four of these, uh, two solids, a strip 
of this beautiful brown with stars. And uh, I'm very excited to uh, get one of those put together and show you how beautiful these have, these are gonna turn out. Yay! And then we make, uh, what was it? Four across, five down, 20 of those large blocks. We put them together, probably put a border along the outside and our quilt will be complete. So I am very excited and we've got our blues. We still have to uh, do our reds. So I'm gonna meet you back over on the uh, sewing table and let's put together our red, shall we? And our half square triangles have been pressed and we go to the cutting board with these, but first we're gonna go ahead and do our red and beige half square triangles. And we're taking our seven and a half inch squares and we're turning them into half square triangles. So we're at the sewing machine now. We're chain stitching down one side. We're gonna turn it around and chain stitch down the opposite side so that we cut it right in the center. We've got our two half square triangles. And we have our stack. We've moved it to the other side of the sewing machine. We're going to put our uh, part of the foot here right on the point. We're gonna sew straight down this block and we're going to keep on going down the entire grouping of fabric blocks and if you have a turtle gear on your sewing machine this is a good time to use it otherwise make sure you're going slow you're keeping lined right up with where you need to be. We're doing a 2.5 on our stitching. I have the needle position on one side of the foot, the left side facing me is left side. And I'm just slowly going down all of these. Once we get all of our red blocks done, we will take them over to the iron. We will press them. Oopsie. Slow it down and try to eat it. But in between each step, we're always pressing. Press, 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 press. Ironing is the key to being a happy quilt maker. Because when your blocks are crisp, it helps everything be in line, be straight. And feels good. Looks good, feels good. And I am all about the senses. Looking good, feeling good. It's all important. If your foot is on the pedal, your eyes and fingers are on your fabric. Any changes needs to be done with your fabric, your foot comes off the pedal. And our red and our red and tan blocks are complete. Now we're going to go ahead and press to lock in these stitches, and then we're going to take it over to the cutting table and we will cut in between, then back to the ironing table to press them open. And we are just locking in our stitches with a little steam, just making me feel good about having flat, beautiful blocks. And I may do a stack of about four on top of each other, move them to the side and start a fresh new stack. And 
we have our red and brown half square triangles all pressed out and we're going to the cutting board. We're simply going to take our block, we're going to lay it, we're going to put our ruler right on each corner, one weight, hands up here, verify I am where I want to be, and we're going to trim our blocks, and clearly I need to uh, get a new blade in there before I cut too many more. And just pop it in here with a weight. It helps to keep my ruler in place. And we just keep trimming our blocks until our stack is done. And then we'll go back to the iron and press them open. But I can leave my weight on the uh, uh, ruler here in between my cuts if I just have one on it or even balance it right on the uh, bottom here. So you can see one end is off, one end is on, and it helps to weight it down and yet still make me uh, a little bit mobile. Whatever works for you. And then when we uh, go ahead and trim these down into the six and a half, I think we might have the perfect opportunity there to bring back over our rotating cutting mat and use the rotating cutting mat with the six and a half inch ruler to trim them down. Just trying to think ahead at the uh, easiest process. And I'll go ahead and trim these up and then we'll start uh, uh, cutting maybe the, uh, the blue into their six inch and the red ones will go back over to the ironing board to be pressed open. And if I keep them all with one side up, it's easier to just grab them and press them. And we are back at our cutting board with our rotating uh, mat so that we can uh, trim our six and a half inch square blocks a little bit easier. We're going to put it on our table, line up some lines. We're going to put this cross section right in the center. And then we're going to weight it down. We're going to cut it to six and a half inch blocks. So my friend, if you are an expert quilter, you will allot yourself instead of the seven and a half inch blocks, you'll do seven inch blocks. For us novice quilters, we have, uh oh, see, like that. Uh, we have plans, now we got to cut it over, uh, we have plans for our scraps and we are going to have absolutely perfect blocks with a little bit more leftover uh, than you will on yours. So we need to uh, maybe put some gummy dots on the bottom of our rotary mat, make sure our line is lined up and stays in place. And we're going to trim off our sides and you see I am so accustomed to walking around the mat that I am walking around the mat instead of rotating it. But whatever works for you, it's not necessary to have a rotating mat. It's just a uh, very cool toy that if you're doing a lot of blocks like we are today, it can make your trimming that much faster. So it's a, a beautiful tool to make your trimming faster. And there, my friends, we have the perfect six and a half inch half square triangle. And we're going to go ahead and do that to our blue stack. And then we're going to uh, press open our red stack and do that as well. Then we get to really play with the fun stuff and do our actual blocks. but use your lines on your ruler and you can pop it down into a corner and just trim up a little bit or you can have even spots. Whatever works for you, you may wanna consider getting some of those, I believe it's in the uh, 
Um, this has a little bit of a grip, but not that much. You can get those little dots in um, different places that are gonna be grips that will help you grip. And some of my other rulers have that, but clearly not this one. Um, so use your weights, use your grips, and it's gonna make your cutting so much easier. It is not necessary to have a rotating mat. It's a, uh, a luxury, if you will. So you can just turn your block or turn your body around your mat. Or if you have a rotating mat, this is the perfect time to use it. And let's go ahead and put a new blade in this and that way it is that much faster and quicker instead of having to go over our pieces twice to catch that little nick. And yes, every time you drop your ruler, you're probably gonna damage the blade even though you think it's protected. So just be careful, be alert, and I I'm so excited about this upcoming quilt. Yay, it's looking great. Oh, look at that lint. Believe! Oh my goodness! Who would have thunk it? Look at all that lint. Okay, so clean that up. We're not going to take off our used blade. Figure out how we're getting into this one. And this is supposed to be a three pack. Looks like I only see two. Oh, there we go. There's the third. So they've got some oil in here around them. And we're going to put it right like so. These two back in their pack. They've got a little oil keeping them fresh and clean in there. Okay, and if I move this off like that. Too funny, you would think I'd remember how I did this, huh? We have our washer. We are up and running again. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, my friends, and we are good to go. And with your old blade, before you can get it sharpened, if you're going to get it sharpened, you can put it in the empty packaging here. Just make sure that you've taped the sides. And that way, your blade is secure inside of the packaging and no one's going to uh, cut their fingers taking the trash if you're throwing it away or like me taking it to get it sharpened and our new blades go back in its storage bin and we get to uh, finish our task and what a breath of fresh air having a new blade is oh my goodness it feels <laughs> so tremendous. I'm gonna knock over the camera as I turn this around. Um, so absolutely wonderful to have a new blade. Make sure I'm still on target. Measure twice, cut once. Ah, look at that, beautiful. Oh my goodness. We are back in business and half the work and we will be finished. Unbelievable. I should have done this a couple days ago. One cut. 
one cut and we are golden. Look at this. Beautiful. Now, sharp blades, you always got to be careful. Keep your fingers out of the way and lock it when you walk away from it, okay? Oops, did you see me move that? Um, by the way, I have just put the uh, uh, ruler grips on the shopping list because as you see on my larger ruler here, I do have the grips already, um, but not on the um, ruler that I'm using now. It's just a little rubber sticker grip and that keeps it from moving. It's absolutely wonderful. Very, very wonderful. And you can reuse the dots out of these. Um, when you order the stickers, make sure that you know if you're ordering 48, you're actually getting 24 and then they're counting the dots as the other 24. So just know what you're getting. A small package if you have a few rulers, much more if you have a, a lot more rulers. So just a uh, another tips and tricks and knowledge is power, right my friends? Knowledge is power. Okay. One slice and it's gone. It's amazing. One slice and it's gone. Sharp, sharp, sharp. Wonderful. And we have uh, four of our stars and uh, half square triangles and we have the three and a half inch strips. We're gonna go ahead and chain stitch and put that all around here and begin making our blocks. We're now at the sewing machine and we need to put our strips on all four sides of our block. So we're gonna go ahead and start chain stitching. You can, if you have already uh, trimmed it down according to the measurements, you can uh, go ahead and uh, do that. Or like I am going to uh, proceed to do is start by chain stitching my four blocks, my first four box to make four of our final quilt blocks. And as always, face to face, right sides together. We're sewing on the backs of the fabric. We need to sew on all four sides of our squares. Thank you. 
already started on these blocks so I'm very excited about that but we need this three and a half inch on all four sides and we're going to uh, take these over to the cutting board uh, trim them apart over to the ironing board, press them, and come back for their next side. So I believe we have four more to do, and we're doing opposite sides so we can take it and press this before we sew onto that part so our seams go the direction that we want, nice and crisp. I'm so excited about this piece. It's, uh, I couldn't envision it before and now I'm starting to envision it. All right, last one of our 12 blue blocks. Time to go trim and press. Sweet. Okay. Okay, and we're over to the cutting board and we're trimming our blocks using our six and a half inch ruler to um, take our chain stitching from block to block and making sure they're perfect. And we're back at the ironing board and we're going to go ahead and press our seams so we can go ahead and put on our other three and a half inch strip to completely encapsulize the blocks. So we're doing our 12 of the blue and brown and then we'll be able to start putting our blocks together. Our blocks are nice and flat, so now we're going to go ahead and put the rest of the strips on. We're going to chain stitch the next round. to the cutting board then the other way go. And we're back at the cutting board and we are trimming up 
our blocks that we have made so far to make sure that they are ready to be pressed and then sewn the next round around. So we want to make sure everything is perfect because it'll make adding the next strip that much easier. And when you're chain stitching, you have the, uh, in this case, three and a half inch strip that we need to trim between each of our blocks. And then we'll take our blocks over to the ironing board to press them open. And we're saving all of our scraps. We'll definitely use them in an upcoming scrappy project, which I love, 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 love doing scrappy projects. Whether it's crafting and decorations, adding on to clusters, putting in junk journals, making junk journal covers, or making a scrappy quilt. off to the ironing board. And this is what we're currently working on. So we have been making our triangle blocks. We have been sewing the rows around them. So now we have a few of these done. I just wanted to show you how beautiful. And these are going to have the half square triangle, the solid half square triangle, solid half square triangle around the outside edge of this block. Okay, and we have our first step of our finished blocks. We're going to take a look at what we need to uh, lay out here. So we're laying out our first block, and then we need to have one of these and a solid. If I can grab a solid, and then another triangle. And this triangle is going to point in. All the blues are going to be touching. And then another solid. And then I want a triangle at the bottom. So this is our final block. And we're going to go over to the sewing machine and start sewing these pieces together so we can create our final uh, block of which, again, we need 20 of these. So we're gonna do four across, five down, we need 20 blocks. Let's start having some fun.
10, we're laying out our blocks to put them together on our table. So I have uh, three of these pieces sewn together. I have three of these sides sewn together, three blanks, and three of these. So let's go ahead and do three at a time. We have an armful of blocks and I need to uh, press them, but first I thought I'd have some fun and let's lay them out. We're only halfway there, my friends. And the first four are laid out. So if I can uh, try and get rid of the quilt underneath and just take a look at this, that is looking pretty darn large right now to me. So let's go ahead and put a few more around it and see how we want the pattern to flow. I'm really feeling like this is amazing. This is only 10 blocks. Um, so I have them uh, laid out. That's just 10 blocks. Hmm, it takes four to make a pattern. But I'm thinking, you know, this, how it kind of goes around is very kind of cool. I, I like that, how it goes around. So if I have two more up top and then fill in the sides with one, two, three, five, six, seven. So seven more blocks is really going to make a complete quilt. So that would only be four across and four up so that is only 16 when we're looking at 20 for the length okay so let's go make some more um, blocks then we'll come back and iron them all have an ironing party and we'll lay them out again i'm loving this And this is how we're looking so far. I'm feeling really great about this. I think we'll put two reds in the upper corners, two reds down here on the sides, and then a row of four reds down here. So eight more blocks, and we are ready to sew our rows together. Trim up all your red blocks. So we have 32 of these. And now it's time to do our eight blocks with our uh, three inch around on all four sides. So we're just going to go ahead and come over to the sewing machine and start chain stitching those strips. And we take our first strip, set the others aside. And we're going to put these face down on our strips so they are right sides together. Make sure we reset our sewing machine to be our correct stitch and placement. Thank you. 
and this strip is going to go on all four sides of our half square triangles. <coughs> We want to keep a consistent quarter inch, making sure our seams are going in the correct direction. And that's why we put the, the piece with the seam uh, so where you can see the seam on the top. eight of these blocks to go with the 12 of the blue blocks that we already have laid out. And it looks like we're getting seven per strip. Now I'm gonna take these over to the ironing board and press them. And what I'm going to do instead is turn them all over and start them on my next three and a half inch strip on the opposite side of the block. And then we'll trim them, we'll press them, and we'll come back and do the other two sides. And if you do this, you just want to make sure that the blocks are not torquing. Uh, they're lined up perfectly. And you keep that quarter inch, whatever that quarter inch mark is on your sewing machine. And more important than the actual quarter inch is that you're consistent on your machine. So if you start with one machine, you want to finish that project with that same machine so that your quarter inch seams are consistent. Okay, and I'm gonna finish up these seven uh, do the other one and meet you at the uh, cutting table or at the ironing board. Two more to go. And we're cutting these apart and as you notice we already sewed our piece on both sides. And press all of your blocks flat in whatever stage that they're in so they're crisp and pretty and then we go back over to the sewing table 
then we've laid out our solids, put our half square triangles on top, and now we're going to go ahead and sew along the red to the red, having half of them with this black out and half of them, so half of them sewn on this side and the other half sewn on this side. Okay, so we have re-laid out our black blocks and we're kind of testing this if we like it being this way. I kind of do because there's less of the lighter color in the center. So we have more of the dark. And I'm kind of thinking we're going to go with this. But again, I keep staring at it because we're going to have four red on the bottom. And that's going to throw off the uh, colors a little bit. So we're still going to play with this once we get them all laid out before we sew them together. We have our first four of our red pieces laid out on our quilt. And... I do need one more row for length. So let's go ahead and do those last four red ones and then take a look and see if we want to uh, change things up or not. So we have laid out our blocks. We still have to press them, but I did want to get a feel for how they're going to look. Now this being a queen size uh, quilt, um, well, I think this is a full-size bed. Maybe it's a full-size bed, full-size quilt. This is looking, I don't know, I love it. I, I, I think that's good. So, hmm, shall we mix around the pieces? What do you think? Hit comments, let me know which one you like. Number one or number two. And we're sewing our rows together just like we did our individual blocks. So just take them two at a time, press them, bring them to your sewing machine and sew them together row by row, then back by the ironing board before you lay them out to do those last seams. And at the ironing board, if all of your seams have been pressed and they're laying the correct direction, you are going to be very, very, very happy with your project as you are not going to have any place where there's too many seams at the same time. So pressing is a beautiful thing and trim all your threads. You're sewing your blocks together. Make sure that your seams are all laying properly. Watch that quarter inch. And have fun, my friends. Row by row, you got this. Just take two blocks at a time till you can take four blocks at a time to where your quilt is coming together perfectly. be doing whole rows.
together our two center rows where our red design in the center comes together. And our thoughts for having the red in the center gives what I feel like is a, a more balanced As you can see are very very versatile so you can organize them in a manner that is pleasing to you and I will do two rows connect the third row put it back on the bed connect the other two rows and then put them together near the center that way I'm balancing the weight that I have on the table and it's not overwhelming. Press a couple of rows and we are done, my friends. So let's go lay this out and see how she looks. And our big quilt reveal. I am loving this. <laughs> We've got our red corners accenting both of the bottom, debating on having a border. But this quilt is complete, my friends. I am calling it an accomplishment. I love this. And soon we will be off to the long arm. Thanks for joining me today, my friends. I hope you've enjoyed this journey as we put together this new uh, quilt block for me and created, showed you how you can create many, many different designs with the same block and even doing large pieces like each block segment, meaning the middle red there is 18 inches by 18 inches by uh, four blocks, 18 inches each. So you can see this beautiful quilt is done with just 20 blocks and it is absolutely gorgeous. See you real soon, my friends. Have a great day.